Hi everyone, this is Mukta Sharma and uh, today I came up with a new video, on-demand video. The topic of the video is how do you deal with defects in production? This is on-demand video and uh, we are going to discuss some uh, points based on my experience. If you have any more, you know, uh, inputs to add to this topic, please feel free to add in the comments. I would be happy to consider them. And with that, uh, let's just start. How do you deal with defects in production? So I have created a document with me so that it will be easier for you to understand. When the application is deployed to production, uh, right, you have completed testing from your side, you have given QA sign off, and now the application has been deployed to production so that end users, real users can start using the application. Once they start using the application, uh, chances of them getting defects uh, will be, you know, it will be there. Uh, they they will find some defects which you may have missed during your testing. Or maybe you might not have covered that in, you know, your test scenario. That happens. That's a very normal, common scenario. So that happens. But we should know how do we handle such situations. Should we blame uh, anybody in the team? Should we uh, blame developers? Or should we do, or should we blame testers? What should we do? What actions should we take to overcome such situations? Based on my experience and what I have seen, um, you know, working in different projects and uh, working in different companies, the best practices to remember and implement are First, you should analyze the defect. Let's just say um, somebody has found a defect and it has come to you from your manager that this defect has been got. So first, you should analyze the defect. Try to understand the scenario in which the user has found that defect. What we call it as RCA, root cause analysis of the defect. Right. Get into a call, call everybody in the team, uh, whether you are a team member, team lead or manager, and then, you know, discuss internally and see uh, what is the defect and uh, uh, how did it happen. Right. We should try to understand what was missed from your, uh, from our end, what, whether we have covered the particular scenario in our testing. If it was missed from our end, then first, as a professional, politely accept your mistake. If your manager says that, um, hey, you have missed this defect and this defect was caught by a customer, then managers, they will know, you know, they will know that uh, it was missed from your end. So he will contact you personally on one-to-one -one and then he will say that you have missed this defect. Why? So don't get into an argument and say, uh, agree that, agree to that and then uh, ensure that you take some qualitative measures. So now the defect has uh, been missed from your end and it has been caught in the uh, production. So then you should see a defect format template. Check from your end. Observe what all attribute it entails. If it is missing an important attribute, then add that to the list. Because uh, end user has raised this defect. Now you have to raise the defect in your system so that developers can have full information about the defect, they can start working on the defect and they can fix it so that again, it can be deployed to production in the next version in the upcoming uh, release, right? So conduct or participate in team discussions, meetings, take a double look at the checklist. You may have some checklist with you, um, you know, so just refer that, ensure that everything is covered in the checklist. If you are maintaining any and ensure that you are following it. Also ensure that you have good test coverage. Besides, your test cover positive as well as negative scenarios based on the requirement. Sometimes testing edge scenarios prevent such situations. You should also test a scenario from an end user perspective. Make sure that you communicate well with the developer about all your defects. Keep them informed. Keep it documented in the tool, whichever tool you're using. If you're using X-ray, if you're using, using Zephyr Squad or any other tool, keep the uh, keep it documented so that developers can work on it and you know so that it can be fixed. Sometimes what happens if it is an urgent defect, right? If it is an urgent defect, then it can be deployed as a hotfix. Developers then and there, like within 24 hours, they will try to build the, uh, they will try to fix the code 
build it and release it immediately and then it will you will have very less time to retest it and, and then it will be immediately deployed to production that is called as hotfix as a tester a team uh, sorry as a tester in a team you should raise all the defects possible whether it's a critical defect blocker defect or you know a low priority defect we should never underestimate the power of a defect in terms of complexity or criticality how big or small a defect is we should document all the defects in the tool having said that p1 defects need immediate attention it should be fixed at earliest at it may impact the business to a large extent but in all these situations a tester you must raise or you must, you know, um, alert people that there is a defect which needs attention. So um, these all are the best practices which I have um, seen, you know, uh, working in the same way in real time. And uh, try to understand the situation first. I know it feels bad when somebody asks you and, you know, uh, try to accuse you for something which you might not have done. But it happens, so don't worry about that. These all are, um, you know, um, all a part and parcel of our life. So you have to deal with the production defects in this way. I hope uh, this video is helpful to you. And uh, please let me know in the comments. If you like the video, please give it a big like. And I will see you in the next video. Until then, please take care of yourself. Bye.